Alright, um, I'm Matthias and you've heard my voice before, so maybe I don't need to tell that, but um, today I'm going to talk about Shapeshifter Beta 2, which we've been working on. I'm just going to pre prepare for a testing environment where you can see it in action. Um, I want to let you know, as the CEO of uh, Flame Fusion, um, I want to let you know that we're a company that focuses much on user feedback. Actually, we, we have a team that constantly Googles or searches uh, the web um, for, for uh, comments on our software, even on unofficial third-party sites. We're constantly collecting feedback of all of our products, and we've read every single comment on YouTube. I'm going to go through every single one of those comments from the Beta 1 video right now. I'm actually just going to go to the video, and I'm going to reply to all the comments that were uh, posted earlier. All right. Okay. Yeah. So one of the th one of the uh, Ruama Huma uh, wrote that he wanted to be able to uh, yeah better be able to distinguish between items. Um, it was kind of hard for him to to see uh, what kind of th uh, which item was selected and which item was not selected. Um, he suggested that we change the color of selected items, but um, we've done something different instead. We hope you'll enjoy it. I'm going to show that right away. Okay, so I'm going to start out by copying two files, and I'm going to present uh, to you the new Shapeshifter 2 interface. We hope you'll enjoy it. This is what you'll see uh, in Shapeshifter. Currently, I'm not running in a very high resolution, so this window isn't really that large, uh, to be honest, uh, on a normal computer. But uh, this is how it looks when you select an item. I can scroll a little bit down, select the second item, and we have many, 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 many um, metadata properties that we're grabbing directly from the file. So what we've we've done here is making the list items uh, and the text larger in the actual list, removing the te text under the list, and also adding this huge icon here next to all the details of the file um, in an easy, understandable uh, format, and also. Um, so, so this huge icon should help you distinguish quickly which item you've got selected. Also, the source here tells a little bit about where this item was copied from. See, this item was copied from Skype, for instance. Um, so, yeah, that's basically how it works. Um, also, uh, we've changed how copying works. Um, before, you had to hold down Control and then uh, hit V and then release control and then the item will be copied. That didn't feel very intuitive and sometimes when I copied stuff with, with Shapeshifter I was still holding down control waiting for the item to, to appear because normally it appears as soon as you hit V like you hold down control and you hit V and the uh, item will appear. So it f just felt unnatural that the item would first appear when you released control. We fixed that. So uh, to swap between items you now have to hold down control V like this and swap to the item you like and release. Now furthermore um, to uh, copy uh, a single thing you hit control, hold down control and hit V once and you'll notice that, that already there it's copied. Oh yeah that's another thing we added. Um, now, the user interface won't even show if you're tapping the button rather quickly. Only if you're holding it down it'll show for 250 milliseconds. If you're just tapping it quickly as if you're copying something uh, normally like that, it won't show and we find that quite intuitive. So it only shows if you really want to switch items because people um, kind of uh, complained on other sites on YouTube that um, it was hard to distinguish. Uh, well, it was um, it was a real mess because it would flicker and all kind of stuff like that uh, every time you hit control V and that was not preferred by many alright so I'm just gonna browse through the other comments blah 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 yeah there was a guy here who complained that there was a other software that used less RAM we're, al we're already working on the RAM usage currently it uses a little bit more with these new, these new features but we're down to like uh, one or two megabytes of RAM and we believe every computer has that. As for Windows XP support, there was another guy who complained about that too. Um, we will unfortunately not support Windows XP and, and that's a general development policy we have. We only develop software 
for the Windows Core 6 or higher, which means Vista or higher. That's simply because Vista brought a new generation of computing to the table. And nothing, a lot has changed, changed from XP to Vista, but almost nothing has changed from Vista to Windows 7 in the, uh, when you look at the core. And uh, probably uh, le even less will change from Windows 7 to 8 in the core. So it's easier for us to bring new technologies to the table um, have them running the same way, error-free, and so on. Um, if we brought XP support to the table, it would slow down our software, and we would be limited by old XP technology. We simply won't have that. Um, so, yeah. Uh, let's see. I'm just going to browse through if there are any other comments. Um, yeah, there was a guy who uh, requested that it should be possible to also copy, copy custom data. And we're actually doing that now. It's actually possible with Beta 2. You can go into the media, Windows Media Player and copy the playlist, or you can go to um, your custom um, programming software and copy a button, as an example. Some dynamic objects that are not well known in Windows uh, can now be copied as well. All right. So, as you can see on my clock, it's getting late in, in Denmark, so I'll just finish this presentation off soon, uh, well, quickly. Um, just going to go back here, see if there's there are final comments. There aren't. Okay. Um, leave any comments in the comment section below after you've seen this video, um, and we will reply to every single comment, and we'll actually listen carefully to it. And if you didn't notice already, every single thing that uh, that has been described in the uh, comment section below has actually been implemented in Beta 2. So yes, as a CEO at Flame Fusion, I want to let you know that um, in this case, user opinions really matter. We really pay attention to what you have to say. We deliver high-quality freeware, and we want to keep our software updated. Also, please notice the, the date today. Um, believe it or not, but it's only been like a week or so since Beta 1 released and we've done major changes. You can expect this rate of development in the future too. We're, we are very quick at developing and some of us stay up all night to develop software, and sometimes 16 hours a day without breaks. Um, we, find this, we find it fun to do development and we are very dedicated. Um, so yeah. Anyway, I just wanted to let you know that Beta 2 is under works. Um, I'm expecting it to be released in three or four days. Um, I think our development team is done with it there. Uh, but of course, you can never be sure. But but that's my uh, that's what I expect. Maybe even tomorrow. Maybe the day after tomorrow. It's hard to tell. But uh, we're really nearing completion. Um, we've also fixed some bugs in Shapeshifter. As an example, we fixed a bug where Shapeshifter would start twice after rebooting the first time after the installation. That was caused by our Flame Fusion installer, which we really apologize. This new Shapeshifter, once you install it, um, it'll actually fix its own mess and prevent that from happening. So it'll actually repair the error that it's been uh, causing. Furthermore, um, we fixed a bug that made, impossible, made it impossible to copy things sometimes um, when the clipboard contained special data such as uh, special text, uh, special byte orders and stuff like that. And uh, we fixed uh, a lot of other bugs such as a rather critical one that we really apologize for that caused the program to crash after approximately an hour of usage due to uh, cleaning up in the error list, or well, in the uh, items list, that was um, faulty. It didn't work as expected. Another thing I want to show to you that we've been working on based on your um, feedback, this was a guy who wrote to me on Windows Live Messenger. Um, and yeah, he, he wanted to know if it was possible to clear his history list or at least delete some items. And now that's actually possible. Um, if you show the interface then at each individual item um, you can hit control X to delete that item or you can hit control Z to um, clear the whole list of items so that way you can you can click uh, well quickly wipe out all the details you don't need and they'll be cleared entirely off the history